Good morning, happy Friday. Welcome back to day two of our ELA unit. All you need today is a pencil, maybe your skills packet if you have some extra time. And then by the end of today, you're going to turn in Friday, September 11, ELA. Let's get started. Couple reminders, you want to have your computer on a flat surface and your screen split between my video, YouTube, and your Google Doc. To find your assignment, go to Classwork, scroll down to week one, and find the assignment that's labeled Friday, September 11, ELA, and then click it to the Google Doc. You'll find it here. I'm going to give you a second to make sure that you have your screen split. Drag me to the left and your document to the right. And it'll look like this. Let's get started. Today's objective is to use descriptions of actions, thoughts, and feelings to rewrite a scene from Rat's perspective. That word's gonna come up a lot today, perspective. We're gonna start with our two now, do some vocab, I'll read to you, and then we're gonna do the writing activity where we imagine Rat's perspective. Start with our do now. Yesterday we read a story called The Wind in the Willows about Mole and Rat. Mole and Rat are personified, meaning that they're animals, but they act like people. What are some ways that mole and rat act like people? Take a minute, fill this out, pause the video, come back when you are done. And you wanna stop on that page as well, notice the pausing point. And now we're back. You can scroll past that pausing point. We're gonna go on to our vocab. On the next page, you'll see a definition and some yellow boxes. Our first word today is backwater. And this is a still and peaceful body of water. We talked about this word yesterday. Typing backwater in that yellow box. The next word is meander. And that means to walk or move slowly and without purpose. Type meander in that yellow box. And then our last word, dejected. And that means to feel sad, depressed, or unhappy. Type dejected in the third yellow box. And we're gonna pause on that screen. So don't keep scrolling in your Google Doc until I ask you to. A reminder, we're reading The Wind in the Willows, and this is a fictional story. That means fake, it's not true. Today we are focusing on perspective. And then perspective is how someone sees something. In this picture, you can see both people are looking at the same thing on the ground, but because the one guy is standing over here, he says nine, because that's how he's reading it. But the other guy is standing over here and he sees it as six. Your perspective changes how you see something. We're gonna focus on that today and imagine how the story would be different if it were told from someone else's perspective. Quick review. The plot are, is the events that happens in the story. The setting is along the River Thames. And dialogue, that's where two people speak to one another or where multiple people speak to one another. This is our setting, the Willows countryside. And let's get started. When we left Rat and Mole, they were about to have lunch along the backwater. Leaving the main stream, they now passed into what seemed like a little landlocked lake. That means surrounded by land. Green grass sloped down to either edge. Brown snaky tree roots gleamed below the surface of the quiet water. Ahead of them could be heard the foamy tumble of the weir with a restless dripping mill wheel attached to a mill house. The scene was so beautiful that the mole could only hold up both forepaws and gasped, Oh my! The rat brought the boat alongside the bank and tied it. So why do you think mills are located close to dams? You might have heard of mills before. But mills are buildings that contain machinery for grinding wheat into flour. So in the 1900s, these were powered by a water whip wheel that is next to the building and it turned the machinery. Mills need a flowing water source to be powered, so that's why they're close to dams. Let's go back. Then he 
helped the still awkward mole safely ashore and swung out the luncheon basket. The mole asked to be allowed to unpack it all by himself. The rat was very pleased to indulge him. Mole excitedly shook out the tablecloth and spread it. Then one by one, he took out the mysterious packets and carefully arranged them, still gasping. Oh my, oh my. When all was ready, the rat said, eat up, old fellow. And the mole, who had started his spring cleaning at, and had not eaten since then, eagerly set to work. What are you looking at? said the rat pre presently, when the edge of their hunger was somewhat dulled and the mole's eyes were able to wander off the tablecloth. I am looking, said the mole, at a streak of bubbles that I see traveling along the surface of the water. Bubbles? Oh, said the rat cheerily. A broad glistening muzzle showed itself among the edge of the bank, and the otter hauled himself out and shook the water from its coat. Greedy beggars, he observed. Why didn't you invite me, ratty? This was a spontaneous affair, explained the rat. By the way, meet my friend, Mr. Mole. Proud, I'm sure, said the otter, and the two animals were friends forthwith. Such a rumpus everywhere, continued, continued the otter. The entire world seemed to be out on the river today. I came up this backwater to try to get a moment's peace and then stumbled upon you fellows. At that moment, there was a rustling sound behind them. It seemed to come from a hedge, wherein last year's leaves still clung. Seconds later, a stripy head with high shoulders peered out from within. Come on, old, bad old badger, shouted the rat. The badger trotted forward, then grunted, hmm, company, and turned his back and disappeared from view. That's just the sort of fellow he is, observed the disappointed rat. So badger saw that there were, peop there were more people there and he didn't want to come eat with them. Simply hates society. Now we shan't see any more of him today. Well, tell us, who's out on the river? Toad's out for one, replied the otter, in his brand new wagger boat. New togs, new everything. A wagger boat is something that's used for sailing. The two animals looked at each other and laughed. Once it was nothing but sailing, said the rat. Then he tired of that and took to punting. Nothing would please him but to punt all day. <laughs> Last year, it was houseboating and we all had to go and stay with him in his houseboat and pretend we liked it. It's all the same, whatever he takes up, he gets tired of it and starts on something fresh. Such a good fellow too, remarked the otter reflectively, but no stability, especially in a boat. From where they sat, they could get a glimpse of the main stream across the island that separated them. And just then, a wagger boat flashed into view. The rower was a short, stout figure who was splashing badly and rolling a good deal, but working his hardest. The rat stood up and hailed him. However, Toad, for it was he, shook his head and concentrated on the task at hand. He'll be out of the boat in a minute if he rolls like that, said the rat. Of course he will, chuckled the otter. Did I ever tell you that good story about Toad and the lock keeper? The story happened this way, otter continued. Toad? At that moment, a mayfly swerved unsteadily on the gentle spring breeze toward Otter. There was a swirl of water and a cloop, and the mayfly was visible no more. Neither was the Otter. The mole looked down. The voice was still in his ears, but the grass whereon he had sprawled was clearly not an Otter to be seen. But again, there was a streak of bubbles on the surface of the river. The rat hummed a tune and the mole remembered that it was considered rude to make any sort of comments about the sudden disappearance of one's friends. Well, well, said the rat, I suppose we ought to be moving. I wonder which one of us should pack the luncheon basket. He did not sound overly eager to do it himself. Oh, please let me, said the mole. So of course the rat let him. The afternoon sun was getting low as the rat sculled gently homeward. The mole was very full of lunch and self-satisfaction, and already quite at home in a boat, or so he thought. He was, however, getting a bit restless, and presently he said, Ratty, please, I want to row now. The rat shook his head with a smile. Not yet, my young friend, he said. Wait till you've had a few lessons. The mole was quiet for a minute or two. 
but he began to feel more and more jealous of Rat. Suddenly, he jumped up and seized the skulls from him. Rat, who had been gazing out over the water, was taken by surprise. He fell backward off his seat. The triumphant mole took his place and grabbed the skulls with much confidence. Stop it, you silly, cried the rat from the bottom of the boat. You'll have us over. And here we can see that's exactly what happens. The mole flung his skulls back with a flourish and made a great dig at the water. He missed the surface altogether. His legs flew up above his head and he found himself lying on top of the rat. Greatly alarmed, he made a grab at the side of the boat and the next moment, sploosh, over went the boat and Mole found himself struggling in the river. Oh my, how cold the water was and oh, how very wet it felt. How it sang in his ears as he went down, down, down. How bright and welcome the sun looked as he rose to the surface, coughing and spluttering. How black was his despair when he felt himself sinking again. Then a firm paw gripped him by the back of the neck. It was the rat, and he was laughing. The rat got a hold of the skull and shoved it under Mole's arm. Then he did the same by the other side of him, and swimming behind, propelled the helpless animal to shore. When the rat had rubbed him down and wrung some of the wet out of him, he said, now then, old fellow, trot up and down till you're warm and dry again, when I dive for the while I dive for the luncheon basket. So the dismal mole, wet without and ashamed within, trotted about till he was fairly dry, while the rat plunged into the water again. He recovered the boat, fetched his floating property, and finally dived successfully for the luncheon basket. When all was ready to begin again, the mole, limp and dejected, took his seat in the stern of the boat. So Mole is now upset because he's a little bit embarrassed. He really wanted to row the boat. And when he tried, he tipped them over and Rat had to rescue him out of the water. So he's feeling dejected, sad. As they set off, he said in a low voice, Ratty, my generous friend, I'm very sorry indeed for my foolish behavior. My heart quite fails me when I think about how I might have lost that beautiful luncheon basket. I've been a fool. Will you ever forgive me? That's all right. Bless you, responded the rat cheerily. What's a little wet to a water rat? I'm more in the water than out of it most days. Don't you think about it. And look here. I really think you had better come and stop with me for a little time. My home is very plain and rough, but I'm sure I can make you comfortable and I'll teach you to row and to swim. The mole was so touched by his kindness that he had to brush away a tear. But the rat kinda looked in another direction, and before long, the mole's spirits revived again. So now they're all back in Rat's home. When they got home, Rat made a bright fire in the parlor. He planted the mole in an armchair in front of it. He fetched down a dressing gown and slippers for him and told him river stories till supper time. Supper was a most cheerful meal. Shortly afterward, a sleepy mole had to be escorted upstairs by his host to the best bedroom. There, he laid his head on his pillow in great peace and contentment. This was just the beginning of their friendship and time together on the river. So what new characters appeared in today's read aloud? We saw Otter, Toad, and we briefly saw Badger. Why does Mole suddenly jump up and seize the skulls or the oars? So when Rat is rolling or rowing, why does the Mole suddenly jump up and take the paddles away from him? He was jealous and he was prideful, or prideful for a moment and he wanted to show the Rat just how well he can row. After Mole seizes the oars, the boat flips over and they end up in the water. Is Rat angry with the dejected Mole? He's not. And how do we know that? Because he's laughing as he helps the Mole to safely. He talks to him cheerily after the incident. He says it's nothing for a water rat to be wet. And then he arranges for Mole to come to his house and lets him stay in the best bedroom. 
So we're going to come back to the idea of perspective. This is how someone sees or experiences something. Remember in this visual, these two people are standing in different places. So this person sees the number six, but this person sees the number nine. It's the same drawing on the ground, but they're seeing something different because they have different perspectives. Today, we're going to practice with perspective and look at a few events from each from parts of the story and rewrite them as if they were told from the rat's perspective. So the entire read aloud today was from the mole's perspective. Let's look at this first event. Mole unpacks the picnic basket and begins eating the food because he's very hungry. What might rat picture? So if you think back to this part of the story, it says that the rat was pleased to indulge him in unpacking the basket. So he's very happy that his friend wants to enjoy lunch with him, and he's pleased to let him unpack the basket. So if we were telling this moment from Rat's perspective instead, we could say, Rat observed Mole unpacking the picnic basket, happy to feed his hungry friend. Go ahead and scroll down to the next box. In this, we see the moment where a creature the Mole has not met yet appears. The badger. Badger is grumpy and does not stay long. This would look different from rat's perspective because the rat does know the badger. He says friend. So he might inside des instead describe that he sees his friend badger appear. He hopes he would stay, but he doesn't because he doesn't like to be around people. So we could say rat observes his friend badger appear. He hopes he might stay, but instead he walked away. Go ahead and scroll down. This next part of the story we see Mole feels jealous of Rat and takes the skulls from him. They tip over. Mole feels terrible. So now we want to think about how Rat saw this event. Rat saw his friend Mole eager to take the skulls, but he cautioned him against it because he hadn't rode before and he knew he could use some lessons first. But Rat's not actually angry with Mole. He's just surprised because he was observing the riverbank. So we could say, Rat is surprised to find Mole took the skulls from him and suddenly they're in the water. But we wouldn't say anything about him feeling angry because he wasn't, he was just surprised. So we could just say, Rat is surprised to find Mole seized the skulls from him. Suddenly the boat tips and they are both in the water. For this last scenario, I want you to think about it on your own and come up with your own sentence about how Rat would see this event. So for this last scenario that you're going to write yourself, we see Mole's perspective is that he feels so guilty. He apologizes to Rat and hopes that they can still be friends. But think back to the story. Rat wasn't even upset. Rat just was surprised. So he doesn't feel angry at all at the Mole he just wants him to take some lessons and he then invites him to stay at his house. So think about how this moment would look to Rat. Rat is instead thinking about inviting Mole back to his house and teaching him how to row because he sees that the Mole wants to learn how to row a boat. So you could say something about how Rat thinks about his friend. He dives back in for the luncheon basket and then hopes that Mole will come join him at his house and learn how to sail. Once you've finished writing that last scenario in Rat's perspective, you're going to go back to Google Classroom and you're going to hit Turn In. Only do this once you've completed your document. So complete the last page, rewrite each event from today's story so that it's told from Rat's perspective. And if you need to, you can go back and pause the video where I talk about the first three scenarios to get some help. But the last one is yours to describe. If you need, you can also rewind and listen to how I just described Rat's perspective, but you do need to come up with a sentence on your own. And that's it. Have a great rest of your day and have a good weekend. See you on Monday.